Welcome back to the Guitar Temple. Glad you're here. Now what better setting could it be to introduce this next entertainer? The great, the icon, Ozzy Osbourne. Today we discuss Ozzy Osbourne's guitarist. This is the Guitar Temple. Let's talk about all of them. Of course, first up. Tony Iommi, guitarist of Black Sabbath, cut off the tips of his fingers. Tony Iommi played with Ozzy. Well, the accident happened <clears throat> before uh, Black Sabbath, really. And it was, um, I'd just been offered this job with this uh, band, uh, to go to Germany and your way out was there oh the yeah absolutely route. yeah and I thought this is great and I really liked playing with them but uh, so my mother says you've got to go and finish off well what happened uh, I went to work and I worked in a sheet metal factory and I did welding and um, so somebody used to cut the metal and then send it down to me and I'd weld it and the one day this person didn't come in and so they put me on the machine and I'd never worked this machine ever and the thing came down on my hand, and as I pulled my hand back, it just took the ends of the fingers off. Um, but uh, what happened in the, 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 before that, I'm sorry, we, we, I went home for lunch, and I said to my mother, I'm not going back into work today, uh, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop. And she went, you go back in and you make sure you finish off your day. So I did, and that's what happened. It's... Uh, you know, she must have felt quite bad about that. Well, she probably <laughs> did, but it, it's really strange how things happen like that, you know. It's, uh, it's a weird thing to happen. If yeah. I hadn't have gone, I don't know what would have happened if, I, if my style of, uh, would have changed or... Because it made me create a style of playing. Uh, explain that. I mean, in a sense, it became, it's almost serendipity, this, this... I mean, literally a happy accident. It was, yeah. Because it, it made me invent a, a, a way of playing, uh, uh, because I had to make these caps for my fingers. I went to the hospital and they said, you might as well give up, basically. And I, I couldn't accept that. I thought, well, there must be a way. And the manager of the firm that I worked for brought me a, a, a record round. It, it was Django Reinhardt. And he said, can I play you this record? I went, oh, no, I'm not interested because I didn't feel <laughs> exactly up for it. And he said, just listen to it. And so I did. I said, yeah, that's really great. And he said, well, this guy plays with two fingers. And it really inspired me to sort of, to do, do it. And uh, so I made some tips myself out of a, a fairly liquid bottle. So I, me <laughs> I melted That's down. That's got a washing up thing that washing lots of people would have yeah. in their kitchen in England. That's yeah. right. And uh, so I melted it down into a ball, got a hot soldering iron and made a hole in it until it fit on the finger. Um, and then just sat there forever, just rubbing it down to make a shape of a finger. And then I had to find something that I could touch the string with that would bend the strings. And, and so I, I tried different materials, and at the end of the day, I came up with a, a leather that would grip the string. And I glued that. I'm a very primitive Heath Robinson thing, but it, but it worked. It certainly did. The icon, the great Randy Rhodes, died at age 26. One of the most famous guitar players that ever played for Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs>
what he would do when he came to England, would do, and when he got time off, he'd drive around for see all these different places, you know. He'd very, he'd see, probably seen more of England than I have, you know. And um, he was very dedicated to his instrument. In fact, when we were touring America, he, he wanted to get a classical degree, and I, I don't know what, what for. I mean, he was a great guitar player, but it, he said to me one time, you know what? I'm not going to do rock and roll all my life. I want to. I want to become a classical guitar teacher. I want to get a degree in classical music. And, and every day off, he'd, he'd get the yellow pages, and we were, all, all of us would be in the bar getting drunk and whatever. He'd be have, he'd have a, a classical lesson in his room. You've always been like a miner for finding amazing talent as far as guitarists go. Talk a little bit about your relationship with Randy Rhodes. You know, you guys met through an audition, essentially. No, I, I was working, I had, a, I had a guy helping me out called Dana Stromy. He was my original choice for a bass player, but it didn't work out. He says, I'd, I'd, I'd audition him, and I was drinking heavily. I was just, you know, I was just fucking out of it all the time. And that is Dana comes in and he goes, I got some, this one guitar player, you've got us. I said, you know, Dana, fuck off with the guitar player. And I just want to go home. I'm fucking sozzled sitting on a chair, eating a pizza or something, I don't remember. And this little guy comes in with blonde hair, and I thought, I said, is that a chick? He spoke, he said, wow. Suddenly my ears pinned back. He says, well, what do you want me to play? I says, play anything. So he starts playing, and I'm like, even in my drunk, drunken, stoned out stupor, I go, oh, this is fucking one of the best things I've ever heard in my life. All these, drug, these drugs are really good. The <laughs> over half million readers of Guitar Player magazine in the U.S. and in 70 countries throughout the world, I'd like to present you with the 1981 Best New Talent Award. Congratulations. Thank you. What did Randy have to say? When they told me, I thought they were joking, because Sharon always jokes with me anyway. And she called me one day and told me, and uh, I just didn't believe it. I, for a week, still, I didn't believe it, you know, because I'm, I'm really proud and honored, and I don't want to stop here, you know. Bernie Torme replaced temporarily the great Randy Rhodes after he had passed away in the plane crash in Leesburg, Florida. He played for a band called Electric Gypsy. Also played for Ozzy. <laughs> Bernie Torme left, he was replaced by the great Brad Gillis, lead guitarist of Night Ranger.
I screwed up on Revelation Mother Earth. Starts out slow and it kicks in fast. I kicked in too early and Ozzy turned around and looked at me with this look of death like, screwed up. Caught my, you know, caught myself, got back into the song. We were supposed to be finished out the show. Everyone said, you did great. I go, oh, I screwed up. Oh, you did great. Next night, Sharon goes, Bradley, you're doing a great job, but tonight, don't fuck up. How many days did you have to prepare for that first show? Uh, when I came out to New York, I met everybody. In fact, that's kind of a story on its own, too. I came to New York. They flew me out there, and they were doing Madison Square Gardens that night with Bernie Torme on, on guitar, who was just in the intern before uh, the next guitar player, which was me, stepped in. And when I got to the hotel, they were at still at, I got in about 11 o'clock at night. They were still at the venue, and I got in. I was supposed to have a room, and there was no room under my name. Uh, I didn't, I didn't even have a credit card. It had $150 on me, and the room was $135. I paid cash for the room. I didn't have a room. I thought, oh, my God. I had fifteen dollars. My name went and sat in my room. All of a sudden, I got a call about midnight from Larry McNeedy, the road manager, saying, "We're all upstairs in the penthouse. Come up and meet everybody." And I said, "Okay." And I went in and knocked on the door and opened the door to this big penthouse. And there was like twenty or thirty guys. There was like fifty people in there, but like twenty guys looked like they were guitar players. Maybe they were auditioning. And Larry, the road manager, said, "Hey, man, how's it going? Nice to meet you. Everything okay?" I said, "Yeah, I had to pay cash for my room. Didn't have a reservation." He gave me five $100 bills. He goes, does this work? I went, this is fine. Come in and meet Ozzy. After Brad Gillis, George Lynch was considered to be the guitarist for Ozzy Osbourne, but he cut his hair and Sharon didn't take nice to that. Anyways, he ended up losing the job and went to work as a guitar teacher at Randy Rhodes' mother's school of music a few months ago i got the chance to speak to jakey lee and according to his story uh he came in to audition for ozzy he kind of wasn't satisfied with that whole audition and uh you were there you met him there and uh, apparently when ozzy asked him to uh when ozzy asked him if he wants to take the gig he said yes and uh according to what jake said you were fired on the spot in front of jake is that story true yes yes completely true yeah i was very devastated my wife was with me um i had quit my job we had two little kids we had an apartment we didn't really have much money and so it was a great opportunity for me and um i was a i was a delivery driver for a liquor company yeah and i would kind of deliver booze into the not so good areas nobody else wanted to drive into those areas so i took that job and uh, it was a good union job, and so I made enough money to support us, and I had to quit that job to go do the Ozzy thing. Yeah. And uh, when they fired me like that, uh, and they didn't pay me, and they didn't give me any compensation, they didn't ask me if I was okay or anything, they just didn't care. They just said, it was literally like, it took like a minute. Ozzy just said, you know, uh, hey, you know, it's not going to be working out. Thanks a lot for your time, and see you later. Bye. <laughs> I, my, my, yeah, my jaw dropped. I couldn't believe it. I just heart dropped. And yeah, I think I cried uh, yeah, <laughs> on the way home. That's messed yeah, up. Yeah, it was very devastating.
after George Lynch didn't make it due to cutting his hair, he was replaced by Jake E. Lee, one of the most favorite guitar players of Ozzy Osbourne. We did a contest here at the Guitar Temple, and overwhelmingly, Jakey e. Lee won the contest. They're not pro guitar players. It's just the average person that voted on that contest. pretty well and so I was told that I should go see this band called Teaser and Jake was they were doing a lot of the Van Halen stuff and it's he scared the living daylights out of me because he looked so good he moved he could sing background vocals he could handle ink. there wasn't a damn thing that Eddie Van Halen could throw at him that Jake couldn't do and it was like oh my god just when I thought I was doing good just when I thought I came out of my cave and my song was played on the radio I'm on a good I'm on the right track and I see Jake and he scared me back into the cave and into woodshedding again seeing Jake for the first time so he was creating his following one performance at a time and it was just like he was the king he was the king of San Diego he was the first guy in my at least as far as I knew because there's a lot of actors and actresses from San Diego that went on to do big things but I think it was Annette Benning that was from San Diego but Jake, he was the king, man. He just blew everybody away. And when he went up to L.A., it was like, ooh, what's going to happen? And then um, I did a couple of things. I, I And I joined that band Vengeance. He was in at one point. So I'd already been replacing him before. I replaced him in Rough Cut. You know? <laughs> that was the demo that got into the hands of Ronnie, was the Vengeance demo. Um, did Mickey Rat find him in Teaser, or was Teaser after Mickey Rat? Oh, well, I think they were both playing at the same time. Because I remember he was playing in both bands. No, I don't think I think that might have been. I, I, I don't remember him ever playing in Mickey Rat. I just remember Robin Crosby and, and um, Chris Hager being the guitar players for that band. And I think that's when they dropped Mickey and just formed the band Rat. That's where they got Warren D. Martini. I don't remember Jake. He might have sat in, but he was doing so well with Teaser. I can't imagine him needing to do anything else other than going up to L.A. and starting his career with Rough Cut. Yeah, and Teaser would like pack the house. They had a huge oh, big crowds. Time. Big, like I said, he was the king, man. That was the band. One time, his strat was in the uh, was getting worked on, and they were doing a rehearsal. And somehow, I got asked to go down to his rehearsal and and have him borrow my guitar. And so, while he was in the bathroom or something, we played Mistreated. With, I played Mistreated with the band Teaser. And all of a sudden, the singer turns to Jake when he comes back and goes, "We got to do Mistreated, man. That's badass." And I think that kind of pissed him off. <laughs> and also, I was using really light string, light gauge strings, and he was used to tens. The, the high E string is called a ten, so it's a little bit harder to bend. So when he picked up my guitar, the first bend, it was it went like, Ooh, you know, like, and he looked at me like, <laughs> what the hell? And I had this thing called a power pot where you had the distortion. All you had to do was click the power. You pull the volume up, and it adds distortion and put it back. So. He nicknamed me the punk with the power pop. <laughs> I don't think he ever really liked me. But we got a chance to talk, and I finally did get a chance to tell him face-to-face, -face, dude, you scared me. And you scared me into doing better. And he was like, really? No way. Like, oh, yeah.
after Bark at the Moon with J.K. Lee, he was replaced with the Black Label Society guitarist, Zach Wilde. Time with Ozzy obviously didn't really influence you musically, Zach, but he still must be like a massive inspiration to you. Oh, without a doubt. I mean, Ozzy's the coolest, you know what I mean? So it's just like, uh, I don't know, me doing my own thing is kind of like, you know, when you move out of your mom and dad's house, you know? It's like <laughs> time to get a job, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, no, but you still love your folks and you go back for the holidays, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, no, I still talk to Ozzy all the time, man. So, actually, he was going to be coming down here to head over to the States, so, you know. Sharon will be down. So, cool. anyway. so you've still got their support, which is great. Yeah. Um, now, why did you opt for a band situation rather than kind of just using going as a solo artist? Because, uh, I don't know, I think egotistical dickheads, I don't want to be one of them. So, you know what I mean? I just figured it's a band, man. You know what I mean? I don't need my name up there, mm -hmm. but, you know. Pride and glory, as we've been saying. But um, why, uh, I was just wondering really if you had a clear vision of pride and glory or if it was something that you wanted to get the members together and let the chemistry kind of um, really make the band happen yeah I mean you I mean you can't you, can, you can't I mean you have you have an, a vision for what you kind of want it to be but I mean if if you're gonna sit down sit around and dissect it you know I mean it ends up sounding so damn contrived it's just such a it's just pathetic man yeah so you know, we just had a bunch of tunes just go in and record them and whatever happens happens you know what I mean? after Zach Wilde left due to the fact that he was creating more and more music to the style of Black Label Society, Ozzy replaced him with Greek guitarist Gus G, a schooled guitar player from the Berklee College of Music in Boston, Massachusetts. <laughs> Ο Ζωσμός μπορεί να είναι μεγάλος σταρ, είναι πιο διάσημος και από πρωθυπουργούς, εντάξει. <laughs> είναι αυτό το level τη διασημότητας. Πάμε να δούμε ένα απόσπασμα που συστήνει ο Ζωσμός μπορούν την μπάντα και βρίσκεσαι και πόσα χρόνια σου να... μαζί του. Από το 2009 μέχρι και το 2017. Πολλά χρόνια. Ναι. Πρέπει να έχεις ζήσει ωραίες στιγμές. Ναι, ωραίες στιγμές. Πάμε. Μόνο να σένα φωνάζει σε όλη από όλη την πάντα Gas G, Gas G, Gas G. Ήμουν ο new guy τότε, ο καινούριο, οπότε. Ε, ήθελα, να, ήθελα να με προωθήσει το κοινό. Πώ να... είναι να συνεργάζεσαι με τέτοιου φήμη ε, καλλιτέχνη και να βιώνει μια περιοδία μαζί του, Νομίζω ότι είναι. Κοίτα, ήταν, με, ήταν μεγάλο σχολείο. Ήταν, ε, το να, δηλαδή, πιστεύω λίγοι μουσικοί έχουν, είχαν, έχουν αυτή την τύχη να δουν πώ δουλεύει όλο αυτό ο μηχανισμό σε τέτοιο level. Οπότε ήταν ένα μεγάλο σχολείο. But they indeed did work with Ozzy Osbourne quite a bit. The great Steve Vai, White Snake's guitarist, David Lee Roth's guitarist, Steve Vai. Music. Steve Vai shared that he has an entire album of music with Ozzy Osbourne that has yet to be released. During the mid-1990s, Ozzy Osbourne and Steve Vai collaborated on a song called My Little Man for Ozzy's album Osmosis. 
Despite being together during this time, the details of their relationship have been unclear. Well, I'm sitting on a whole Aussie record, Vi said. Unfortunately, it looks like the album will most likely remain unreleased, as Vi doesn't have any control over it or rights to it obviously, which is disappointing, with the guitarist revealing that they did record some pretty good stuff. Alex Golnick of Testament also worked with Ozzy. also worked with Ozzy. Joel Holmes was the guitarist with David Lee Roth. Central, Allison Chains, guitarist, worked with Ozzy Osbourne. It's interesting being a musician, and it's what I always wanted to be. My mother's side of the family was pretty artistic in a lot of different ways, but mostly everybody played some sort of an instrument. So there was always music in the house, and 
I was really taken by music at, a, at an early age. Andrew Watts of Andrew Watts and Friends also worked with Ozzy Osbourne. But I don't know what part of it, but it reminded me of an uh, album in the 70s, that style. And I went home and I, and I my friend, she's been a friend of me that one for many, many years, more, more, more so than my, my wife than I. I said to Sharon, does this remind you of an Elton song? She said, not really. <laughs> I said, well, fuck off then. <laughs> and she said, uh, I said, well, I wonder if he'd play on it, play on it or sing on it. Should I ask him? He says, yes. And the next thing I know, Andrew's down in his place in Atlanta. Has that blown your mind? I can't. I mean... Can you get on a plane and go and record Elton John for Ozzy's album? <laughs> I mean, the whole thing was like that. Yeah. Just one thing after the next, you know? It's like, make this basic kind of... These basic tracks with, with the guys... And, you know, I played the piano to my best of my ability. This, this chorus, I had these chords for a minute, for years, actually, and never turned into anything. Then when I showed it to the guys, then that's when the magic happens again. Here, go here for the verse. Okay, cool. And, do you know, that's how it was all kind of made. And then it's that. And then we write this heavy song. And then Duff calls me and says, okay, Slash can come over at this point to do it. I'm like my god so and slash is on it then ozzy is like i want an orchestra and a choir on this song <laughs> go to abbey road and record the and there's the video i hope you liked it i hope you enjoyed it we do appreciate you here at the guitar temple would you give us a thumbs up could you do that for me please just press thumbs up and do tell a friend and share like and subscribe of course i would appreciate that very much and i'll see you next time here at the Guitar Temple.